we have one more speaker on our agenda, Natalia Gorbacheva. Are you ready? Yes. Um, can you hear me well? Yes, everything's fine. There's something uh, I would like to make our discussion even hotter. And I prepared several slides for you. Thank you, Andre, for invitation to this workshop. There's a trend at this workshop coming from further or other people representing conventional energy or renewables as Andre. But let's look at the growth of contradictions in the energy system. Next page. That's it. This is it. Uh, various forecasts have been mentioned previously uh, made in Russia or abroad, and there is a trend that the share of hydrocarbons is going down and the renewables going up. But what is meant to be the renewables? That's another thing to discuss, but I don't have time to discuss it now. So let me share some figures. If you look at the global trends in power sector investments, there are two sectors, renewables and grids, uh, stand high, which are interrelated, and Texas uh, keeps being mentioned all the time. And it was not so much about the renewables, but it was about the development of the grid. What is the meaning of all these figures? The world is getting prepared to large-scale electrification, and elect electricity is omnipresent. It can come from various sources, and that increases competition. But what is the problem there? That we're discussing today, I try to structure the problem. The energy choice depends on market prices, and energy people like to handle CAPEX, OPEX, but we as economists know that those market prices have been distorted by whatever subsidies, direct or indirect, or by adverse externalities not included in the electricity prices by shadow effects, differences between local and global prices. We economists know that the global prices are the indicator of the best possible use of resources, and our energy choice develops on the quality factors. Uh, simulators do not like non-quantitative aspects. They are different to simulate, but life is much more complicated than that. Uh, quality factors uh, can be handled using verbal uh, methods. The narrative economics is a new book uh, that is hugely important and which that we have to take into account in making energy choices. Looking even deeper, it all depends on societal values that predetermines our convictions and values of the values of various sources of energy. And Nikolai was absolutely right. We don't have centrally planned economy and every economic entity, every economic agent will select their own optimum based on their values. I come from Siberia, we're talking about Russia and Siberia, but there is a contradiction between various regional contexts. If you look at Siberia as a mega region from the Urals to the Pacific, you can see from the diagram, Russians will know that, but it may be useful for our international colleagues. In Siberia, coal remains king, as it was during the first industrial revolution, and no less importantly, coal generation, like you see from the map, is concentrated in southern Siberia, where the population is 30 million, which is an important factor to assess, to make assessments uh, when it comes to impact on human health, while renewables have a huge potential in Siberia, wind in the north, solar in the wind and wind in the uh, south. Uh, the most advanced solar power plant in Russia is in the south of Siberia in Altai. 
where we had a number of a series of meetings and field studies. And these are the figures I wanted to share supporting what Nikolai, it is not four rubles per kilowatt hour, it is less than that uh, on solar energy. The method, I am skipping the method of analysis, and this is about the true cost of electricity in Siberia. This is my next slide. Our approach was this. The first module is financial benefits. We all know the cash flows from actual power plants and the true cost of electricity in joules, gigajoules, because coal and gas power plants uh, operate on co-generation basis, electricity and heat. But if we, on top of financial benefits, we add all non-market or extra market effects relating to air pollution, climate change, societal cost of the carbon, if we add shadow pricing and subsidies, and solar power plants also are recipients of the subsidies, then the whole picture will change. Of course, talking about financial Coal power plants are quite beneficial, financially beneficial, but adding all other effects that the Siberian people pay for with their own health, then coal generation becomes the most lossy alternative, while the solar power plant are Break are at break even even without subsidies, and the gas is still an alternative. In our view, these are our conclusions. It is very uh, promising for the development of the renewables. So, what are the re my brief conclusions? I would like to draw attention to the fact that competition between conventional renewables, uh, uh, hydrocarbon and renewables is getting fiercer. The monetized analysis of costs and benefits of electric generation Siberia shows that subsidies and shadow pricing has a greater impact on the pricing than adverse externalities. So, of course, not only carbon taxes should be introduced, but subsidies should be dropped of domestic prices or for hydrocarbons. Without that, and secondly, if the capex should reduce uh, capex for solar power plants by 37 percent, there are individual cases where they succeeded to do that. In the United States, they made in Ohio, and um, the prospects are really good for the development of solar stations. Following the result, it could even generate in the medium term, it could even be competitive with gas generation even in Siberia. Thank you.